We have here verse 25 of the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John, Jesus in an ongoing conversation with religious leaders who have just put the question to him somewhat point blank, demanding that he admit to them or deny to them one or the other that he is the Christ. Of course, the problem is that he's given them plenty of indication already in connection with his claim to his identity, and they have succeeded again and again in sort of avoiding that and trying to catch him on the horns of a dilemma and not being altogether uh, transparent or having much integrity in the way that they question him. And so you do get this feeling that it's kind of a yes or no question and in some ways a sort of no-win situation because regardless of how Jesus answered, it's going to be a problem. If he answers, yes, he's the Christ, then they're going to question him as to why he isn't fitting the mold of their expectations. And of course, if he answers no, he's going to be untruthful. And so what he does is kind of uh, uh, take a third alternative here, and we find that in this verse 25, apocrythe. Apocrythe is from apocrinomai. It's a deponent verb. It means I answer. This is the aorist passive in form, but active in meaning. So it's third person singular, aorist active indicative. He answered, autois. This verb typically takes the dative. So we have the dative plural, masculine here. He answered them. And then the subject of the verb, ho Jesus. So Jesus answered them. And then this is the answer, apone, from Lego, I say, first person singular, aorist active indicative, I said to you, who men, this is the dative plural, second person pronoun, so I said to you is the idea. Uh, and basically what he's saying is, I've told you, I've answered your question, but now chi, the connective chi, u, pistuita, and you do not believe second person plural, present active indicative. So basically Jesus says, look, I've answered your question. You don't believe it. In fact, the entire way in which you're responding to me shows that you're trying to create problems, bait traps, and so on, rather than accept it. Then Jesus continues, ta erga. Uh, this is the neuter, um, accusative plural article, so the works, and then the neuter noun, works, erga, we get the word erg from that, of course, in English. The works, ha, the uh, relative pronoun here, again, the uh, um, accusative plural, so the works which ego, added for emphasis, uh, poyo, from poyeo, I do, first person singular, present active indicative, the works which I do, in, preposition, takes the dative. Here's the dative article, in to anomati, in the name, onoma, the word for name. This is the dative singular. So in the name, and then to the genitive singular, patros mu, in the name of the father of me, tauta, these, referring once again to the work, so it's the neuter demonstrative pronoun, these, marture, uh, from martureo or martureo here, bear witness. Pari, preposition, takes the genitive emu, bear witness of me. So Jesus has both answered them uh, verbally, responding to their questions, but he's also performed miracles, which any fair-minded person would, upon assessing the significance of them, also reach the conclusion that Christ must be what he's claiming to be, that he must be indeed the Messiah. And so really what Jesus is highlighting here is the duplicity, uh, the lack of integrity on the part of these who are attempting to question him, their unwillingness to recognize either what his words are or what his works demand as an assessment of his identity.